Alrighty, welcome back, friends. Well, I... Oh, wait. What happened to you? Oh, they, they removed an unknown mask, so everything's alright. But, in this video, I'm going to be changing out the rear caliper on my 2012 Mazda 3. If you haven't already, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Check out my channel content for more, and hey, have fun. Imagine this is two thumbs up. I can't do two thumbs up. Oh, you don't know how I'm mentally feeling right now. <laughs> um, I'll give you a quick backstory, keeping it brief and simple. On my trip down to Georgia, visiting my grandparents and other friends that live down there, they decided, well, hey, why don't we go down? And I go, yay, let's go down. I love it down there, trust me. Warm, barely a winter. Now, on my trip through Cherokee and Asheville and going through Knoxville, I noticed that I was getting a spongy brake pedal. This brake pedal was starting to get very spongy. And, okay, let me tell you. It got to the point where, let's just say it went to the floor, you could hear my ABS module actuating constantly, trying to slow it down. And then the uneventful happened. The brake fluid warning indicator light came on. And I'm like, okay, now we got a brake problem. I pull off to the side and the internal seal, I kid you not, it was leaking out of the boot of the caliper piston for the rear brake caliper. The internal seal just, I can insert a picture of that when I pulled the wheel off in the mountains. So that's the left side when I pulled that off. Now. The right side went bad shortly after I got back from the trip. What's concerning to me is why both of them would go out roughly about four to five days apart from each other. The thankful part is I'm just happy that I was able to make it back to Michigan through the mountains alive and well. Now that meant the world to me. Not only getting to work on my car with my grandfather and then working on his car no less with him. I mean, that means the world to me. Being able to do that has brought a new memory that I can cherish forever. And I definitely cherish that, especially when, I, when this happened and now I'm like rethinking life. <laughs> okay, I made it through the mountain safely and then a week later I drive down to Daytona <laughs> in the same car, knowing that there's another concern. And that's how I found out about the other side. My question now was, was it from where or was it from the vehicle sitting? Or was it from a combination of both? Vehicle sitting, all of a sudden I drive it and it gets hot. Well, it could be a combination of different things, but replacing the brake caliper is actually really simple on this car. And I could do not, don't let it intimidate you. The only things that will really intimidate you in the car is probably the brake cable, emergency brake cable for short. So without further ado, let's get right into it. During my road trip to Georgia, I had a brake caliper on the other side go bad. Well, in this case, if we look in here, we can see clearly that the seal internally is going bad on the brake caliper, and realistically, it's just dripping brake fluid down. This did happen on the other side as well, and I will show you some pictures. Car hasn't been driven very much, but I don't know why the internal seal would have given out, so we're going to tear it off, pull it apart, and take a look. First thing you want to do though, is make sure that this brake cable, it often gets stuck as you can probably see, it looks a little corroded in there. We want to make sure that that actually moves and we also want to make sure that the brake line comes off because the brake line can't come off until the caliper comes off and this has to come off before all of that. I made sure I have a catch pan under here because I don't want the brake fluid leaking everywhere. First thing I'm going to do is remove this upper cover here. Sometimes you may need to pry them off, but mine came off. You can see that it's completely saturated. This is a seven millimeter. I'm gonna make sure these slide pins move. I gotta turn the ratchet off. All right, more gold in there. Now I gotta remove the emergency brake cable from the vehicle. There's quite a few different methods on which this can be done. A lot of the times with these integrated brake caliper and brake emergency brake combos, I usually just take a pair of vice grips, use a small pry bar and pop this over and it comes right off. 
Other times you may need to compress this first before doing anything. And then all we're doing is just getting this to pop off and we can pull the brake cable out. It's like that. We gotta make sure that this cable will come out, which if we have to, we have to give it a little tap from the inside. There's a nice little metal ring and I can use a long punch, preferably brass, which I don't have, to pop this off. Why I miss Georgia, look at that. Oh my gosh. It may help to stick some penetrating fluid on it. I know this is some weird angle because this is my hand right here, but I have a punch right here. See if I can just tap it a little bit. To slide the rest of it out. Like that. There's our emergency brake cable. When I put this back in, I'm going to put a little anti-seize on there. I'm going to tuck that aside, making sure I take note that it goes over, not through. Before I remove that brake hose here, I have to take this anti-rattle clip off the front and then remove the caliper from the vehicle. A lot of people find these really hard to go in. Yes, they are hard to go in, but they do fly out too when you take them off. So you just want to kind of be careful when you pop them off. Returning to this back side with that 7 millimeter, I'm going to loosen and remove the 7 mils that hold this into place. For this upper one, I know it's kind of hard to see. I'm going to do the same, removing the slide pin from the vehicle. And then the caliper after dropping a pad, can just slide right off. Here's our pad. Doesn't look too bad. The internal pad has some brake fluid, as we can see exactly where it's coming from. So this is our brake hose right here. We don't want to damage it. We can actually pop it off right at this joint if we need to, to give us a little more clearance. And that gives us a little more room to bolt this out of the way. <clears throat> I got it. All I have to do is just hold it and I can spin this off. And there's our caliper. I'm just gonna let drip into my drain pan. So I'm in the bathroom right now, not actually using the bathroom, I'm just in the bathroom with this caliper off of the Mazda 3, and I wanted to take a look and see why it failed. Now, if this is satisfactory condition, most rebuild their calipers. This is the kit that I have for this caliper. And what we mean by rebuilding them is we reseal them. New outer seal, new internal square cut seal, as well as a cover for the bleeder screw. And then this is for the brake, emergency brake. And I apologize, my pulse is racing at the moment. I wanna know why this caliper failed. What I'm going to do here is I'm gonna inspect it a little bit. Doesn't look like it's very bad. I did wash it. 
It looks like my brake, emergency brake works as it should. We can see it actuating. These are our slide pins that I put back in. It's a little gunky, which you could just take to the wire brush. This caliper is rebuildable. A lot of people don't rebuild their calipers because it's cheaper to get new ones. Um, in most cases, that is the case, but a lot of the time, I don't necessarily do it in Michigan here, but a lot of the time on cars, I can most likely rebuild them. Nevertheless, what I can do here, is just rotate the piston if it's not seized in place. And already I can see some faults. Right here, I see I have a torn boot. You can see. We also have a tear here on the actual boot. So let's pull this caliper piston completely out. What I'm going to do is just unthread it completely. Oh, we have another tear. A bigger tear. I know you can see that. Okay, but those were not the problems that we were facing. Looks like this caliper piston can come out. So we can see there's a little bit of scratching, but I don't see pitting or anything like that. There shouldn't be. This thing was replaced not that long ago. I can pop this seal out. There's our seal. Inside this piston, there's a little, there's a little seat here that just holds a square cut seal. And that, when the piston gets pushed out, this square cut seal kind of just pushes out ever so slightly and pushes back in and that's what keeps everything in place. The back side of this gets the fluid and then that square cut seal just kind of goes, that's what makes this thing work. It's not actually rocket science as most people think. And those are the seals. I could try and replace this one here. Do I really want to? It's not leaking. So I don't think I'm going to. These things were rebuilt already and then they were rebuilt again and then now they're rebuilt. I mean, at this point I feel like I should just rebuild them myself instead of just warranting them out. But you know, you know what I mean. If I was going to rebuild this one, all I would do is take some brake fluid or some synthetic grease, something nice and clean that hasn't been sitting. I'm gonna wipe that off. Take a bit of that brake fluid on my finger, wipe it around. We're gonna take that square cut seal, stick it back in. Just like that. Then if this was getting reused, which it's not, we would look for pitting which this is like the cleanest cylinder ever. I'm gonna just stick that thread back in. Take my seal, wrap it around. It's like that, so it sits like this. And then I'm gonna press that seal on, starting from the back side. Working my way around. And there's our seal, it's in there. And then realistically, all I have to do now we want to make sure all of this is lubricated and clean if we were actually going to reuse this. Make sure this goes in without damaging itself. Make sure it's up and down. 
put the spring back on, put the slide pins back through, and then theoretically, with that spring back in place, see, it, technically it would be rebuilt and I would be able to stick it on the car. But I just wanted to know what caused it to fail in the first place. And if you really wanted to rebuild these, you can. Internal square cut seal gave way and that's why this one failed. We have the new caliper right here. Would you look at that? All redone. I did a good job. No, this is a different one. Look at that. It also says Ford on it. Interesting. New spring. How come you can't buy all of this? And they make, yeah, they say you can rebuild these, but all you can do is reseal them. They don't sell the spring. They don't sell, they don't make it look this purdy no matter how hard you try to do it at home. Got two new slide pins on it. What I'm going to do here, just pop that off, slide the pin out, which I could have probably just slid out the other way. There's our first slide pin. Pop this cap off. Pull the slide pin out. I'm going to take my brake line with whatever fluid got collected, because I know there's fluid in here. And I just dripped it all over my pants. See, it's not dripping. And I'm gonna do what I did before and re-thread the caliper on. For the brake pads, I'm just going to take some brake clean to them before putting them back on. I'm just going to stick them back into place. Put those back in place like that. I'm going to drench it more with brake clean. trying to dry up as much of the brake fluid as I can. I'm gonna stick the caliper back onto the vehicle. I'm gonna stick the slide pin back in, at least to hold it in place. Do the same for the bottom side. Same thing for the bottom. I think this is a different size pin, if I'm not mistaken. What the frick? What is this bull crap? At least I keep a bag of spare parts in case I ever need them, because I have a couple of these spare slide pins. Back to what we were doing, if it was so rudely interrupted, and yes, if you're wondering, yes, they are different. Why would they put two different ones on here? That doesn't make sense. Okay, so it's holding the caliper into place, which is fine with me for now. And then I need to work this back in and get the emergency brake cable on. I can clean this, stick a little bit of anti-seize on it and then put it back on the caliper. Just cleans it up a little bit to help it go in the hole. I can do a test fit to make sure it actually fits. And I guess I have to drill out the hole a little bit too. It doesn't look like it's gonna just fit in. Oh wait, maybe. I actually may have to trim it. Yeah, it's not fitting all the way in. I could tap it, but I, I prefer to trim it so then I don't have to have it corrode. So, I mean, yeah, I'm gonna trim it a little. I've got the caliper here. You can kind of see the hole right there that needs to be drilled out. It's kind of a hard angle to see, but what I'm gonna do is just wallow out the hole or bore it out 
and take the little grooves that are in there. So there are little like grooves in there. I'm gonna take those out, make it smooth. Just like that, that should just about do it. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. Doesn't take a lot, does it? <laughs> now that I know that this can pop out, I'm gonna clean this off a little bit and then take some Sil Glide, put the slides back in, snug them down, and then I can stick the brake cable back in. Some people are gonna probably ask why I did that. Well, because if I had those little grooves in there, what's gonna end up happening is when it corrodes, it's gonna be a pain in the keister to get back out. I mean, it was pretty hard to get out in the first place without tapping, and hopefully this at least keeps it with enough tolerance, because all I'm doing is pulling on this, which pulls the emergency brake cable and the piston out just a little bit. So at least I can reduce the amount that I have to, if this ever fails again in the future. I'm just gonna snug them up. And I'm gonna take this, put it in, slide it through, and then pull it through the emergency brake. I'm gonna open the bleeder screw so it can gravity bleed while checking the master cylinder. For the slide pins, they are torqued to about 20 something foot pounds, so I am just gonna hit my ratchet a couple of times because it's not gonna be that tight. So, I mean, those are pretty snug as they are. And then I'm gonna return the... So what I'm gonna do here is just slide that on there. Do the same for the bottom and put that back in. It says Ford. And then I'm going to open this bleeder screw, which is actually right there, and let it gravity bleed into my pan. So this is actually, weirdly enough, an 11. And yeah, it's gonna be an 11. And I'm just gonna loosen that and let it gravity bleed. Don't need to go so far, just enough to let it bleed out. I'm gonna leave it open until it drips. From the front of the car, underneath here, I know it's a little dark because of the light. And this very clearly says that it takes dot three fluid. So I have dot three that I'm gonna be pouring into here and I'm gonna let it gravity bleed. We just don't want the master cylinder going dry or the ABS pump and module because it's really hard to get air out of the ABS module. It's been a hot sec and it's starting to drip pretty constantly now, which means that I can go through and actually bleed out the system. So I actually have a pressure bleeder at my house and all I do now is just make sure this is tight and then I can stick the cap on and then I can put the anti-rattle clip back on and this brake caliper is done. Our anti-rattle clip, the new one that came with my brake caliper. These go on pretty straightforward. A lot of people really struggle with these for some reason. They're not something that you really need to struggle with because struggle busting is never fun. But what I do is I just kind of get one in, kind of bring the other one up and in and I pull out just like that. And with those both out, I kind of just slowly tap them both into place. Just like that. See, no struggle busting, no challenges. Nice, easy, and simple. So I'm just spinning it, making sure it spins. I can't spin it, but I let it off. Okay, I spin it. Oh, I got a little bit of drag. We're gonna have to do a little more bleeding out. It also could be just the placement of the caliper because of where it sits right now. I mean, we've got no load on it, so. There we go. I use a 21 millimeter loose with these lug nuts. the wheel and tire back on. Uh, 
And I'm just gonna put two lug nuts on for right now. Because I wanna make sure that this thing spins freely. You know, we got a little bit of drag. I'm gonna go through and re-bleed this again and see where I'm at. Okay, I've re-bled it. It seems to have the same amount of drag as the other side now. So I feel content with that, honestly. So I'm just gonna stick the rest of these lug nuts back on and then take it out on a test run. And I mean, it's not that hard to feel a lot better than it did. Some drag still. So I'm, I'm almost certain if I start driving this around a little bit, it'll go away because the other side still has a little bit of drag as well. Otherwise, this thing is packed up and done. Ta-da! Well, all four are bled out and the car sits a little high now for some reason. Huh. Well, that could be my new suspension on here. Uh, I do want the, the elevated height there. Ground clearance, because Mazda. Is there something in my roof? I hear something crawling around. I really hope you enjoyed watching this. It was an interesting endeavor, one that was definitely unpredictable, unplanned. I couldn't foresee it coming. So, and the fact that I drove the car straight to Daytona and a week later and drove it on the beach and hung out with a bunch of amazing people and probably had the time of my life and watch cars go around for 24 hours. Got this t-shirt here. I mean, what better of an adventure can you get? And to me right now, life's an adventure. I will say that. It's not a hard process to do. And it realistically, the hardest part would probably be getting the e-brake cable on. If you haven't already, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Check out my channel content for more and hey, have fun. What I'm gonna do is work on my videos a little bit since I have some time to do it while I work on my masters and then also on top of that, I'm gonna recover. So we'll know if it's all clean and green or yeah. But I'm hoping that everything worked out great and realistically, bad hair day, come on.